What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to order blog posts with Django and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at ordering our blog posts. But before we get started, if you like this video, wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, I talked very briefly about ordering posts, and I told you a sort of a little hacky way to do it using the ID, and I'll look at, I'll go over that again in case you missed it. But what we really want to do is order our post by the date that they were created. And when we set up our model, our post model for this blog, we didn't create a date field of any kind. So in this video, I figured we'd go back over that really quickly, make a change to our model, add a date field, update it accordingly, and then order our post by that date field. And it's a little bit tricky because we've already set up our model, we've already migrated it, you know, we've made a migration, we pushed the migration. Now we have posts, we already have some posts, and none of these posts have dates, right? So from now on, if we're gonna add a date, we need to go back and add dates for these, and we need to do that sort of automatically, and that's a little tricky, and I'll show you how to do that as well. So uh, just to mention how I did it uh, with the ID, I mentioned it in the last video, uh, let's see, we can head back over to our code, and if we go to our views.py, uh, we can see right here in our home view that lists all of our blog posts, uh, you can see I've set the ordering to negative ID. So we know that every blog post has a primary key. It's, it's a unique ID number that Django assigns to the blog post whenever we create it. Now we didn't make that when we created our model. If we go back and look at our models.py file, we have a title, title tag, author, body. There's no ID field, right? It's just created automatically. And in fact, if we go back to our migration, when we first made this model, we made a migration, then we pushed that migration into the database. And we can look at that migration right here. Uh, let's see, it was this one. And we can see, boom, this ID field was created automatically. And it's set to auto created equals true. It's a primary key, that's true. That's why we get that PK thing in some of the, the pages that we've been working on. A serialized false, verbose name ID. So, uh, like I said, Django just does this for us when we create a model, so that's very cool. And we can use that ID. We've been using this ID to look up posts and to add posts and to do all kinds of things. We can also order by ID. So this ID, like I mentioned, is a unique number for each blog post, and it's incrementally increased. So the first blog post ID is one, the next one is two, the next one is three. So a year from now, if you've been making blog posts every day, you're gonna be on, you know, 372 or something. Well, we don't have a date necessarily, but we can order by that ID. We can say by negative ID, meaning put the biggest one first. So if we save this, and we just set ordering equal to negative ID, and then come back here and hit reload, notice post the first is the first one and post the fourth is the last one. Now if we hit reload, boom, it switches. Post the fourth is now the first one and post the first is the last one. Now, why would we wanna do this? Well, whenever you post a blog, you want the latest blog to be the one showing up first, right, on a list. So uh, that sort of makes sense. Now, this works perfectly fine. You could keep it like this because this is probably always gonna work because anytime you create a new blog post, it will automatically increment that ID to the next number. So instead of the fourth one, the next one will be five. So five will then be the biggest one and it will be shown first. So that will work, strictly speaking, that's just fine but we still might want a date field just to have it. you know. So if we click on this, it might be nice to have the date that it was created on there. You know, a lot of blog posts have dates on them. Uh, Google likes to see dates because they like fresh information. So, you know, we should have a date anyway, and I should have made the, uh, put a date field in the model when we first created it, but I just didn't think of it. So let's head over to our code and let's look at our models.py file. And we can just add another field here and let's call this, uh, I don't know, publication underscore date or post date, maybe that's a little better, a little smaller. And we want to set this equal to models dot date field. Right now we, we need to add some date time stuff, import that and we'll do that in just a second. Inside of here, we want this to 
automatically assign the current date to any blog post whenever we create a new blog post. We don't have to, we don't want to have to actually type in the date every time we make a blog post. We want it to just do it automatically. So to do that, we just inside of here type in auto underscore now underscore add equals true. And that's kind of a weird string, auto now add, but uh, that's what we do. Now we need to import some Python date stuff. So from up here, we can go from date time, import date time, and also date, right? It's just some, some Python date stuff that we can import. So all right, go ahead and save this. Now, anytime we do something new in our model, we need to make a new migration, and we need to push that migration into the database. And this one's going to be a little weird, because like I said, we're, we're telling this to do something automatically whenever we create a new blog post, but we've got a bunch of old blog posts that we didn't do that for. So we need to sort of take that into consideration and make a little tweak to handle all of those old blog posts. So we'll do that from the command line here when we try and make this migration. So, so let's head over to our terminal, control C to break out of this and make sure you're in your simple blog slash a blog directory and make sure your virtual environment is turned on. If you LS, make sure you can see the manage.py file so you know you're in the right spot. And now we just need to make a migration. So let's go Python manage.py make migrations. And it's plural, it's always plural, even though we're making one migration, it's, it's plural. And we're gonna get an error here. So it's saying basically you're trying to add the field post date with auto add new equals true to post without a default. So these old posts don't have that by default. And the database, it says needs something to populate for the existing rows. So what do you want to do? Do we want to go off on our own and figure this out? Or we want to just do it right now from here. So we'll just do it right now from here, because it's easier. So we hit one. Well, so now it's saying, enter the default value that you want for all those old posts. Now, we could go in and try to like, hack around on it to where, to where we put the exact date we think we made the post, but we don't really care. Those are just fake posts anyway. So I'm just going to say they're all done today. We're just going to use right now, the time right now as the time that they were created and just pretend that that's correct, right? If you've got an older blog with like hundreds of posts, you wouldn't want to do that. But this is brand new and these are all fake posts we've already made anyway. So it doesn't really matter. So it's telling us right here how to do that. It says you can accept the default time zone now by pressing enter or you can provide another value. So I'm just going to use time zone now. And that's whatever today's date is. So I can just hit enter and boom, it, it's made our migration, right? So if we're curious about what this migration looked like, we can come back into our migrations folder and then boom, here it is. And we're doing on post, we've added post date. This we're adding auto now true. We're using the default Django utils time zone now for uh, regular default stuff. Uh, remember, go back to our models.py, whenever we created this title tag now, or this title tag, we had to set a default. We're basically doing the same thing here. We're just using time stuff to do it. So, okay, that's done and that's cool. Now we've created the migration, now we need to push that migration into the database. So Python, manage.py, we've already done this before in the past, migrate. And boom, it's done. So now we can run our server and head back over here and just reload to make sure everything's still working okay. And yep, looks like it. But nothing has changed here. So let's change a post to actually now have that date listed on the, the blog post page, because that'd be kind of cool to have, right? So let's head back over to, let's close our migrations thing and get rid of some of these. Let's head back over to our templates and then article details. This is where the pages themselves get rendered. And if we look at our models.py file again, we can just reference this post date thing in the same way we've referenced everything else in our database up until now. So head back over to that article's detail. And where do we want to put this? Let's look at this page again real quick. Uh, maybe right after John Elder. I think that would be good. Yeah, so let's find the name. Here it is first name and last name and a little thing. Here we can just now call post dot post date. And let's put another little dash there. And let's put this on its own line. Let's put this on its own line too. Let's put them all on their own line just to make it easier to read. Okay, so if we save this now and head back over here and hit reload, boom, we get April 17th, 
2020. Now that's today's date, uh, Friday. It's Friday, <laughs> and uh, obviously this post wasn't created on the 20 uh, on the 17th. We created this several days ago uh, in a previous video. But since it's an older post, it used the time zone dot now thing to put today's current date, and uh, that's cool. Uh, if we create a new post, well, first, let's go back to our ordering. So our views.py. So we're ordering by negative ID. I'm just going to copy this and let's comment this out and put a new one. And let's use that post ID, which was where to go. I'll just copy it from here. Boom, post ID or a post date, I mean. And let's put that in there. Well, okay, from now on, this will work. It will put the, the newest post first. But right now, if we come back here and hit reload, post the first is still the first one. Why? Because all of these posts have been given the same date. So there isn't any distinction between them. Tomorrow, if we make a new post, it will be the first one to, to be shown. But now, all of the posts from today, they're just kind of put up in, in the order that they are. In fact, if we add a new post, let's, let's just call this new post after date thing and a new post the author is me this is a new post after we tinkered with the date field in the database right if we post this it's still all the way down here because it's all just the same day so it doesn't designate by hours or by minutes or whatever, you could t tweak it to do that, I guess, but uh, I just don't care enough about it to do that. But for now, this is fine. Tomorrow, if we post, that post will be the first one listed. And from then on, ever after, it will work correctly. Uh, but for now, this is just the way it is. And if we click on here, boom, it shows the date. That's pretty cool. If we wanted to put the date here, we could do that too. We could head back over to our, let's see, templates directory home html well before we do that let's go to article detail and let's just grab this thing so we can just copy and paste this and if we go home and then let's see right after our name for instance we could put that and then maybe we want a little dash after it or something save that come back hit reload right I don't know, whatever you like. <laughs> uh, so that's cool. So that's how we add dates. Pretty simple. The only little hiccup was when we pushed the migration and we had to, you know, select the time zone thing. Uh, but that wasn't that bad, really. So uh, pretty cool. So all right, I think we are now done with all of the uh, adding and editing and removing and all of that good stuff for our posts. Now we want to start to talk about user authentication. And it's going to take a few videos. So I think we'll start that in the next video. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, two thumbs up, it's Friday, come on, Friday. Uh, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, hundreds of hours of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and we'll see you in the next video.